Monsters with wings do destructive things. Here's a look at the high toys. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Monsterverse, Rodan. Its original and rightful rulers, the Titans, they are part of Earth's natural defense system, a way to protect the planet to maintain its balance. Once again awaken a monster, but this time it can fly at supersonic speeds. Now Rodan from Godzilla, King of the Monsters from 2019, joins Haya's exquisite basic line. Haya Toys has focused on creating cost-effective and high-performance action figures for the exquisite basic series. Rodan has 15.74 inches wingspan with 16 points of articulation. The wings are made of PVC material and have wire and that allows you to recreate the air poses. Just before we get down to look at Rodan, you may have already noticed that he's attached to his display stand. This is going to make things a lot easier when it comes to actually measuring off his wingspan. While I'm doing this as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at Hyatt Toys that once again did provide this sample of Rodan from the exquisite basic line that we could have a look at in this review. Wingspan-wise, you're looking at Rodan being 14 inches in width. That's pretty impressive. Or to flip that around, you're looking at it being about 36 centimeters wide. It might be a little harder for comparisons while keeping him on a display stand, but here's what Rodan looks like, at least along with Godzilla. This happens to be Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Kong, but it still fits the bill nicely of what one figure would look like with the other. And I don't think you would be able to really have Rodan perched in any other way than the display stand that comes included with the figure, and I'm fine for that. He's a flying figure, after all. While Godzilla is going to be taking to the ground, Rodan, on the other hand, could be sailing the skies. Failing the skies only really comes handy for the fact that the figure does come with a flight stand, which we can actually go ahead and take the figure off for right now. I'm going to put him right over here for a second. Technically, I suppose you could have him perched on his feet, but his feet really aren't strong enough to be able to hold the weight of the wings. But he does come included with this display stand. I'm going to go ahead and remove the neck for right now, just to show you here. It's a little hard once you get this plugged in place. I might even have to heat this up a little bit. I didn't even actually think it was going to be a harder than what it is. But you actually can see there's holes that, a total of nine holes, actually three, three, three. I just happen to plug it right in the middle. And then now again, I'm just having a harder time now to remove it. Yeah, I'm going to have to heat that up a little bit with hot water because, again, I don't want to break the plastic. But you've got yourself a little knuckle joint there in the bottom of it. And then you've got a series of knuckle joints that follow after that. There's one there, of course, at the bottom, one in the middle, one at near the top, and then one closest to the top, right around the section that's going to clip around his waist. So I like the idea that you have adjustable display stands like this. And again, I would feel sort of raw of the fact that Rodan would have not come include with a flight stand. So I'm glad to see that Hyatt Toys did include one. Not only did they include that, but they also included as well the eye brackets. We normally have seen eye brackets before when it came to the exquisite minis. The exquisite basics, though, also do have these little eye brackets. You can just clip them in the top. You see there's little grooves here on the sides. You just simply attach them. And then you can take yourself multiple display stands. I'm indicating right now using invisible display stands, but you will essentially be taking multiple display stands, attaching them all together, and you have yourself a larger diorama scene. So there, we're going to put that to the side. We're going to come back to that, obviously, because that's going to be the best way to displaying Rodan. And picking up Rodan so you can get a closer look at this. Uh, head sculpt-wise, I guess we'll start places first there. Head sculpt, I think it's a really good likeness of Rodan. Rodan's sort of a cross, I feel, between kind of like a hawk, a falcon, and maybe like a dragon. A head sculpt is really cool on this one. It's kind of a little harder to make out his beady little eyes, simply just how, how small they actually are. They're a little bit more coming across like a, a very dark copperish red. You can see as well, they've added some nice little red on the end of his beak, and there's some decent articulation that they add, uh, ended up putting into his mouth as well, so you can actually open and close his mouth revealing a tiny little pinkish purple tongue on the inside of it. Rodan, uh, wingspan wise, does have a very long wingspan. The sculpting that they've actually put into it is sort of a cross between what almost looks to be leather and sort of, sort of the hide or side of a tree trunk. Really nice color use as well. Going with more of a darker brown as we kind of get to the, the end arms or the parts that are attached to the wings, the tiny little fingers that are on the ends. And then it gets kind of progressively more lighter, kind of giving more of a tan, kind of tan leather down below here. Now this actually does have a frame built inside of it. So you can in fact actually bend the wings if you'd prefer them not to be so flat. So 
well, un, un, in, invite, in, uninviting. Instead, you can actually kind of bend the wings down instead, and there's that option also as well. Now, granted, not only is that the case, but there's also articulation that they managed to put into the shoulder area there too. So you can also move the arms up and down as well. So it's not just it's not just limited necessarily to having a wire built frame inside the wings. No, you can actually move the wings also around as well. It does unfortunately though break up a little bit of the continuation. Obviously, I think the wings would have been more closer attached, actually more attached to the actual body of Rodan. Here we actually unfortunately get these little gap spaces. It's one of those cases where it's just unfortunately it's unavoidable. You can't kind of bring the wings a little bit lower, closer together if you want the more seamless look. Rodan has the tiny little tail. You'll be happy to know also as well. It does have postability, so you can move that also up and down, back and forth. And again, we'll kind of get more into the articulation in a second. Now, his tiny little talons, would Rodan still have talons? I would assume yes. Tiny little Ro uh, Rodan talons, you can see, does have also postability. I will say, though, they're not very hard. They're, they're not very strong joints. The joints I've noticed here on the tops of the thighs are very loose, in fact. So, I mean, even just to kind of have him resting on his legs, he doesn't seem to have the necessarily necessary strength to hold, unfortunately, the full weight of his body. Because, again, he's got the wingspan on either side of it as well. I find, like, just, like, yeah, his legs especially like right up here the tops of his thighs just aren't strong enough this one leg is the looser of the two so if anything again i'd probably be displaying this guy on the display stand i mean it's there anyways and i would like likely want to display this guy in flight anyways sculpting wise you can see a closer look at his chest kind of keeps to more of the darker coloring of the brown but then you've got these nice little areas here where my guess is they probably would have taken this being the core basic coloring of the plastic sort of this kind of caramel brown and then they would have painted the color over top of it kind of does look a little bit like a face doesn't it am i the only one that sees a face eyes nose and sort of the mouth around the a little abdomen area but again like there's all this cool articulation that they managed to put in there as well i guess while we are on the topic of articulation let's run through this as best we can okay so like rodanfer's head does have a ball joint here so you can independently move his head from the rest of the neck but then he also has a secondary neck joint that's a ball joint right there hopefully you guys are able to see that okay so that does allow also the figure to be able to move this back and forth you can also move it up and down as well so between just those two things alone there's a lot of real range of motion that you can actually display this guy now again like you can have him either flying this way or you can have him angled this way as well we're going to kind of bring in the display stand here more more in a moment the upper torso is on a very generous ball joint so it's very very easy to move this figure and i guess one thing by having the the wings not being attached completely to his body and only attached up here it doesn't limit any articulation when it comes to moving his body up and down this way Legs, again, are the only thing that's a little bit on the more looser side, sadly. Again, like the tops of his thigh are a little on the more looser side. You can move him back and forth this way. He does have also an independent knee articulated point, so you can also bend it right there. And he does also have ball joints really at the at his heels, so you can also rotate him back and forth this way as well. Tail articulation, too, so you can rotate that. That seems to be, once again, relying on ball joints. And already mentioned, he does seem to have ball joints also possessing there in the shoulders of his wings. With, again, a wireframe built in this leather-like wing server. Oh, that's... Love the sculpting that they managed to put into that. Now, as for the display stand, I'm just going to bend the wings just a little bit because I don't really like the wings of Rodan to be completely flat. I like to bend them a little, just a little bit. For the display stand, we're going to bring this back in. The display stand, I've noticed, seems to attach the best just in front of his legs. I mean, again, you can bring this up so you can have him kind of resting again. If you try to put it behind his, which is really where I would have preferred to have it, you can still rest it. But it's actually just more of a balancing act than anything else. I've actually had Rodan falling a couple of times doing it this way. I find the easiest is actually just clipping it just just after his just after this section of his torso, clip it right there, and sort of just then wrap this around his body and then clamp it to the top here. And that seems to be the best place, the best job to hold everything on Rodan together. Just make sure I've got everything in place here. The display stand does a well enough job of actually holding everything. And again, you can have them lowing down like this, kind of looking down on his prey below him. Or you can also have this tilted back and have Rodan sort of more arched upward. Again, we just want to make sure his legs are completely out of the way of things. It's a nice looking figure. The only thing about it, though, is getting him onto the display stand isn't always the easiest thing to pull off. Simply just because he's got so much of a wing on either side of his body. Then again, just to get him perched, you have to kind of not only attach him onto the display stand, but hope he stays onto the display stand, which hopefully I'm actually, let's just bring his wings out just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, we want to basically get the waist clip kind of around this section right here and then clip that around. But again, like just to get him to balance on there isn't always the easiest thing to pull off. And a lot of times you can kind of just bring the display stand a little further forward and kind of resting on there. I almost even wish that bringing this back in here for a second, 
that they also gave us maybe an option where instead of always relying on just being this being a waste clip, maybe if they had made a little ledge point like this, because I think the ledge of plastic would have also helped to kind of stabilize him. Because again, like when you see him clipping it around his torso as not as great of a job as I was hoping to do, I find like, again, like this is sort of designed to feel for just a straight round body. I mean, again, like when you're looking at this, if you look at the waist clip the way it is right now, it sort of is really designed to fit around a circular shaped body. And I find it just doesn't fit as well around Rodan as I would hope. But again, we're going to go ahead just as, as best as as best as we can get this. Get this guy clipped. Get the display stand clipped around his body. At least wrap up the review. Let's spin this around. Maybe we'll flip it around this way. Get this around the figure's body. Yeah, the display stand is about the only thing I really would have fixed. There we go. Finally. And again, we don't really necessarily need these eye brackets. These eye brackets we can make use of if we happen to get ourselves another flying figure. Speaking of another flying figure, a segueing over away from this one but we are also getting ourselves mothra very excited to get ourselves get our hands on mothra a smaller figure obviously than the one we're going to be looking at here the one that we have looked at here with rodan uh, like the look of rodan the only thing i would say from rodan's standpoint isn't necessarily the the delivery of the figure but the delivery of the means of actually getting this guy into a stance so again like just to spin this around quickly before we actually take to the turntable you can see like it fits around his body okay but I feel like, if anything, instead of using just a generically shaped, a one-size-fits-all display stand, I think they should have really fit one, designed one specifically to fit around Rodan's body, which isn't completely circular-shaped. It's a little bit more kind of an off-shaped body. I think they should have really made a waist clip to accommodate something like that. One thing I certainly will say is anyone that's looking to get into the reviewing space on this platform, you will always find that things never really work the way that you want in the review. And sometimes it does take you a little bit of time away from the camera to get everything sort of fixed up before you can kind of go back to look at it again. And the whole reasoning why I do bring all that up is in this review, of course, I did fumble a little bit to get Rodan attached onto his waist clip. Admittingly, the waist clip doesn't fit around his waist still as best as I would have hoped. It does take a little bit of time. I took a little bit of time away from the camera to actually get him properly attached onto there. And also with the use of the additional knuckle joints that Hyatt did put into there, four joints, four actual knuckle joints in the adjustable neck, you can actually get him to any desired look that you want. And he does actually hold the pose pretty good. I've got him actually a little bit further back and I've got his body a little more tilt forward. So it actually, in this case, looks like more Rodan is swooping down as opposed to sort of surveying the scenes below him. I like the look of this pose and again, would not have been able to pull off not only because they didn't, because they included the knuckle joints in the adjustable neck, but also because Hyatt did also put the wireframes into his wings. I love the idea that they did. They could have used just simple plastic wings and then you would have had to rely on the joints in the, in the sockets of the shoulders, but they did one better. They added wire wings so that you can actually wrap the ring, the wings around his body. So it looks like he's about to engulf his prey below him. Love the look of Rodan. Not only do I like the sculpting of Rodan, I like the post Billy on this guy, but I love also the paint that they applied, giving him that leather-like hide to his wings. Sort of the darker and the lighter color tones of the browns all work really well for this figure. And again, with this kind of figure, he really, he really did need a display stand. I'm so glad to see that Hyde did take the time to include a flight stand. Doesn't fit as admittingly well as I would have hoped, but it does fit around his waist when, again, you take a little bit of time away from the camera. Big thank you, though, to the folks over at Hyatt Toys that did provide the sample of the brand new Godzilla King of the Monsters, Monsterverse Rodan, that we could have a look at this review. This, by the way, FYI, this guy is slated to release this month, this month, April 2023, for a price point on average about $49.99. So it's a little less than about $50. But what do you guys think of Rodan? Let me know down below in the comments section. And once again, a big thank you to the folks over at Hyatt Toys that did, again, provide the sample. If you guys enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and on board to see more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification we will also be looking at as mentioned in this review i believe that we are going to be looking at also mothra so if you guys want to see more stuff from godzilla king of the monsters make sure you're coming back to this channel on a regular basis and as always guys thanks for watching see you guys next time